Well, you all know about black holes and in the next 18 minutes, we are going to decipher the reality behind black holes. Astronomers have certainly discovered very ultramassive and compact objects in the sky and apparently there are good reasons to believe that those objects are black holes. To appreciate this, we revisit another very compact exotic object star known as neutron star. A neutron star could be more massive than sun, but its radius could be only 10 kilometers, which is the size of a small city. So it is so compact, its gravity is very strong. The acceleration due to gravity on the surface of a neutron star could be millions and million times larger than what we find on Earth. And whenever stars are compressed, they have some magnetic field. That magnetic field gets amplified very rapidly. So neutron stars have magnetic field trillion times more than sun has. And with this enormous magnetic field, when it rotates, it generates very powerful electric field. This electric field accelerates electrons, photons, and they radiate. In fact, neutron stars spinning, they produce pulses of very strong radio waves, and they are known as also pulses. But what holds a neutron star stable against this strong gravity? Neutron stars comprise of neutrons. When neutrons are packed together, there is a very repulsive force whose origin is quantum mechanics. So it is this quantum repulsion which holds them stable. But that has a limit. If a neutron star would tend to be more massive than three solar masses, then gravity wins and this repulsion cannot hold, it starts to contract. It is believed then it will contract to a point and would form a black hole. And black holes cannot be only three, four solar masses. They could have arbitrary solar, arbitrarily massive. That is why we believe those compact objects are black holes. Though we see many fancy illustrations of black holes, by definition, there is a single point mass you see at the center. So that was the first solution of Einstein's general theory of relativity. And the red sphere you see, it is actually imaginary, there is nothing, it's vacuum, except the point it's all vacuum. But within the red sphere, the gravity is so strong the light cannot escape and the red sphere is called event horizon. But many odd things happen physically or mathematically at this red sphere. And inside it, even funnier things happen as if space becomes time, time becomes space. Mathematically, we can do anything, but physically this is incomprehensible even now. That is why Albert Einstein, the founder of general relativity, did not believe in black holes till his death. Neither did most of the other founding fathers of relativity. But later, mathematical relativists came and they told that we can do some mathematical dressing on that red sphere and it would look all hunky-dory and then it should be a real object. But physicists went on you know, expressing their objections that there is a lot of unphysical things. And this is 1962 paper by Paul Dirac, who is one of the finest theoretical physicists ever, and of course a Nobel laureate. So in 1962, he is telling that all the stars which are contracting, the black hole radius is called 2m. m is the mass of the point mass. It cannot, you cannot contract them up to 2m, it has to be larger. And you can think mathematically there is a point, but in physics, Real universe, there is no point, hence no black holes. Similar thing was just spoken by Albert Einstein. Now I am jumping to a 1980 development. So mathematicians told that when you do mathematical dressing the red sphere, it becomes so nice, no physical quantity can diverge there. But in 1981, a simple paper showed that acceleration due to gravity actually blows up there. So it is a kind of physical singularity contrary to what they told. And next year, mathematicians are also telling that it is so regular and so observe astronaut is dipping, diving into a black hole. He won't notice anything. But next year, this paper showed that there will be, he would observe many physical quantities going here and he can detect the black hole. 
So, 22 pillars of black hole paradigm fell. One should have been, there should have been rethinking about black holes, but it did not happen. It was already very powerful paradigm and big boys were in the game. So, this is I am jumping. See, this is 1988 paper by famous Indian astrophysicist Jayant Narlikar and his student Anu Padmanavan. Now, they are telling there are so much conceptual problems with black holes that it is only of academic interest. And in real universe, you would call only quasi black holes. What are quasi black holes? Stars which are almost as compact as black holes, but just greater than radius to m. And they are not vacuum, they are full, like sun is full, neutron star is full, there is no singularity. But they could not show how it should form. See, this is one year old paper. After 100 years, this is by the sky and telescope, very famous magazine, people are wondering what is inside black hole. You are telling you all knew everything about 100 years back and there is all, it is ocean of confusion. Now, this is a paper even published later, probably six months earlier, that they are telling do event horizons form, that red sphere is called event horizon, do black holes form and the conclusion is no. So, physicists have been actually always questioning concept of black holes, but now you may say, but 2016 gravitational waves were detected from black holes that confirmed black holes. This is misrepresentation of facts by the authors and also by the media. This report came in 11th February 2016 and I immediately had email correspondence with the LIGO team and I told them you have detected gravitational waves that is fine, but you have not detected black holes, they must be because of quasi black holes. This discussion was of course inconclusive and then after six, after six weeks, a paper got published in Physical Review later by Spanish relativist. They told that maybe LIGO signal is correct, but it need not be from black holes. It would be from whatever called quasi black holes. So, if black holes have not been really truly detected. Now, 1988 onwards, me and my American colleagues started working on, we for the first time in the history claimed that the relativity actually does not allow formation of exact black holes. How did we tell this thing? See, first we imagine there is a black hole, the red line is there. What I showed, though in relativity, you know that light moves with the highest speed c. We call trajectory of light very special light light. But other particles having mass, they always move with a speed less than c and their trajectory is called time like. So, I showed that if a particle is falling towards the event horizon red line, then time like trajectory would change into light like which is not allowed by relativity. So, there are two possibilities. I can always say that there is no black hole. Then they would say what well, there are exact solution of black holes. Then the catch is that. So, black hole that solution comes as an integration constant R 2 m that mass of the black hole must be 0. If it happens, then the particle never arrives at the black hole. Actually, m is equal to 0, black holes are never formed. Why this is a natural result? Because black holes are the ultimate ground state of matter. And in the engineering students know ground state energy is the minimum. And ultimate ground state, it is the ultimate minimum which is E is equal to 0. And even everybody has heard of economists have also heard E is equal to mc square. If E is equal to 0, then you have m is equal to 0. So, this is a natural result. Similarly, I showed if a star is collapsing, its matter from time like it would become light like which is not allowed. So, no black holes, only quasi black holes. And if at all mathematically, m is equal to 0 black hole. Now, there somebody tell, no, no, his papers are crap, we do not buy them. But then I found 40 years before a French relativist found the same result. He is telling whatever you see as a sphere, that is actually point. Hood's implication is that 2m is 0, m is equal to 0. Now, somebody say even then we buy uh, uh, Louis Bell's uh, result. Then also I can convince you in one minute. Suppose some quantity is there x, whatever it is, it is proportional to m, the mass of the point mass. And if somebody tells no, no, that x is also 0, then what is the solution? m is equal to 0. It does not require much uh, intelligence, m is equal to 0. And this technically, this x is something called Ricci scalar point mass, physically it should be proportional to the mass. And but black hole is a vacuum solution and it is derived by starting point is x is 0. So, definitely exact black hole mass is 0. And there is another reason why people believe in black holes. 
In 1939, two American physicists, Oppenheimer and Snyder, tried to solve the collapse of black, a star using relativity. And that apparently showed that black holes can form. But in the paper, to solve equation, they said pressure is equal to zero. Everything has pressure. And they warned that we are taking very unrealistic real assumption. And in reality, there should not be any singularity. But that warning was ignored and people told everybody has found a black hole. And so after 72 years, I wrote two papers telling that when you set pressure is equal to zero, your density also is zero tacitly. So mass is zero. So actually there is no collapse. It is all mathematical illusion. But again, if you insist mathematically, we have a black hole. That black hole is m is equal to zero, which is the ground state. Now then, what is the catch? So what are those compact objects in the sky? The catch is that earlier we started with the thing that only quantum repulsion can stop collapse. This is not true. Radiation pressure can also stop collapse. Radiation has a repulsive effect. And in principle, astrophysics, we know there is Eddington limit if an object is illuminating too much. The Eddington limit, then radiation pressure exactly counters black holes. So you have a static state and you have a, uh, a collapse must stop. And 1960s, this was discussed by French, very famous physicist, Fred Hoyle and William Fowler. In fact, William Fowler shared Nobel Prize in Physics in 1983 with Chandrasekhar. But they did a Newtonian paradigm, so I extended it to general relativity. And now general relativity, we say the space light moves in curved, light can be curved because space time is curved. Now light is curved and if the star is compact, then this curvature becomes more, it gets bent more and more. And now you see two lines, inner that uh, yellow line is r is equal to 2m, that is the event horizon. But beyond that, even at r is equal to 3m, already gravity is so strong that radiation quanta light can move in curved paths. This is called photon sphere. Now, what are the effects? The effects are that this happens like this. Whenever stars actually collapse, they become hotter and they must emit radiation. Now, when they are emitting radiation, for a star like Sun, it does not have much gravity. The radiation goes almost in straight lines. But for a neutron star, it is fairly compact and it is slightly bent radiation. But when you go to the photons here, radiation is almost everything is falling inside the star. And when radiation falls inside the star, it becomes even more hotter and hotter. So we have shown that before it becomes R is equal to 2m, already it attains Eddington luminosity. So that means by definition, collapse is stopped. You have a quasi-static state, not a black hole. But that is not the end of the story. Because event horizon, it is not exact black holes, it is still emitting radiation. Little bit. When it is emitting radiation, it is also slightly contracting very slowly. And this contraction we have shown goes indefinitely, eternally. Hence, I call such objects extremely hot, massive objects, eternally contracting or eternally collapsing object. At the same time, I told whenever stars collapse, magnetic field gets amplified. These echoes are much more compact than even Newton's star. Therefore, I predicted that they should be magnetized even much more, thousand times more than Newton stars. And Hence, me and my American collaborators from the magnetospheric eternally collapsing object. And they should go ultimately to the ground state E is equal to 0. That means M is equal to 0, but it is asymptotically actually never attained. And they tell the black holes are the absolute piece, abyss, gravitational piece. This is not exactly true because black hole idea is that everything merging to a point quickly. Then space time gets snapped and matter is stuck there. In contrast to what we are showing, the star contacts, it becomes compact, space time become deeper. Then again, more gravity, it dips even more. So this becomes a runaway process, eternal process, hence eternally collapsing object. So what we have shown, on the one side, left side, you see the actual black hole mathematical single point and vacuum. It has no fire, no matter, no magnetic field. And what we showed right side, it is a compact thing like a sun. It has strong magnetic field. It is full. There is no singularity. And that is what we require in astrophysics. Now, my American colleagues have been showing from 2002 onwards that many astrophysical black holes are supposed to be actually because, because they are evidences indirect. There is strong magnetic field. You know, 2006, there are many papers I am showing just two. 
2006, they presented much direct evidence that very massive object quasar has a magnetized central object and that it is likely to MIKO. This was so important research, the center for university, Harvard had a press release on it, maybe the only press release on any Indian research. And this press release in one line just admitted that the original idea original came from an Indian physicist, unknown Indian physicist. Now, after that, there have been more direct evidences of strong magnetic fields around black holes. This is unexpected results because black holes have no magnetic field, ideal black holes. And if these papers were, these results were usual results, they would not be published in top scientific journals, nature and science. But these authors do not admit that they are basically micros. They cannot. Now it is too prestigious. So they do hand waving and almost self contradictory manner try to explain strong black magnetic fields in the black hole paradigm. Now this was the press release I showed you and now again I come back to earth. I said the micros are ultra compact form of suns. Now sun actually has fairly strong magnetic field inside and it is a plasma ionized matter and this combination makes it unstable and often there is wind is coming out and sometimes fire is leaping out that is called solar flare and sometimes there is massive outburst of charged particles, photons, electrons and that is known as coronal mass ejection. In 2015, two NASA telescopes found that from close vicinity of a so-called black hole that corona has erupted. This cannot be explained in black hole paradigm. They are vacuum, they have nothing, but this can be directly explained in terms of Miko paradigm. If you have not understood whatever I have told, then you should go through my book and this book could be published in few months. So to sum it up, so black holes are exact solutions, but that solution is illusory because that mass is zero. Then massive compact objects are something else. And what something else one can think of quantum gravity, some weird things, unknown things. But I am telling your relativity as the answer, light and radiation gets bent in gravity. Then they are trapped in gravity. Then they must attain so-called Eddington luminosity. So by definition, they become static objects. And then they should be m is equal to 0. The ultimate contact down state is e is equal to mc square of 0. So your so-called black holes are not black holes. They are magnetized objects, compact objects, because. Thank you for your attention.